Hi, everybody from Mission Control Houston. I'm Josh Byerly. I'm joined once again here by Nick Radford, who is the Deputy Project Manager for Robonaut. If you've been watching our coverage this week, you saw quite a bit of activity with Robonaut getting uh, checked out on board by the crew of Expedition 30. Nick, talk about it. It's a big week for you guys. It, everything went according to plan, right? Yeah, it's uh, it's been a tremendous week. Um, this, this week was special for a couple of reasons. One, we had our first back-to-back uh, -back ops. So on uh, Tuesday, Valentine's Day, we uh, you know got to the control center early in the morning and uh, set up, did our ops, and then uh, temp stowed it uh, overnight and uh, came back Wednesday morning and uh, completed our, our second round of ops. So that was good. It was good training for the ground. Um, you know, we envision a lot of that type of operation in the future where we are, uh, you know, we want to we want to do more and more with this robot, which right. is going to require back-to-back -back activities like that. But uh, Wednesday was tremendously successful. Um, you know, everybody on the ground and uh, especially the crew in orbit was having a, a fantastic time checking out the robot. And we've successfully checked out uh, every every joint on the robot and every sensor. And uh, uh, big smiles on our face here in the control center where we had uh, all the all the systems are are good um, and uh, we were we are ready to go now talk about what he's you're seeing the video now he mm -hmm. I mean there was quite a bit of movement and activity with his yeah. hands and his fingers and his arms yeah right? absolutely uh, we've we've flown a robot uh, we've flown a robot for one primary purpose and that's to do work right. and in order to do work we need to have very capable hands and very uh, sensate hands and so we are uh, we wanted to make sure that we got all the uh, the degrees of freedom working in the hands um, getting all the data as we expected it and uh, and making sure that we were going to be able to complete the tasks that we have uh, scheduled for this robot yeah, I think coming up a little bit after this you'll see the, the famous handshake in space between yeah that uh, was a ma an amazing moment we actually uh, adjusted the timeline slightly because we wanted to make sure we got to this uh, to this handshake, but right. yeah, Dan Dan Burbank was uh, absolutely fantastic, and uh, you know, Robonaut reaching its hand out, uh, sensing all the forces that Dan was going to impart into the robot, and then uh, initiating the closure. And I believe Dan said it was a firm handshake. So let's talk about this. You guys were watching this on the ground. You can actually see the data coming down mm -hmm. from Robonaut. So as Dan squeeze his mm -hmm. hand and you we're can recording tell. everything yeah so we have you know predetermined limits that the, the that we have uh, accepted in the safety community right. uh, that that the robot is allowed to impart in its environment and let's not forget this is one of the first payloads uh, ever on the space station that can actually impart forces <laughs> in its environment so yeah. um, there really wasn't a, um, a specification for how to how to fly a payload such as this so um, we used a lot of the framework from how the crew would interact with the space station yeah. and so we've uh, made sure that the robot doesn't impart uh, you know anything above its limits and so we record all that data on the ground and uh, make sure that it's uh, that our sensors are always reading the values that they should because it's it is a very serious um, it's a very serious um, uh, you know, thing we want to we want to make sure that it's uh, always remains safe. Well, I mean, there's been a, you know there's been people on the Twitter accounts and things like that. They 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 smile about this because it compared to either you know one of the Cylons from Battlestar Galactica or yeah, the Terminator well, our, or whatever. Our <laughs> next checkout is to try to take over the space station. Okay. So we're uh, <laughs> we you know we're not trying to promote that too much, but <laughs> fly it away. It, well, I mean you know talk about some of this because we saw you know one of the crew members just sort of bumped into it mm -hmm. a little bit before and it, and it shut down. Yeah, so. absolutely. Uh, we have a we have a hair trigger safety system right now yeah. that is by design. Uh, we have when, uh, one of the agreements we made with the safety community was it was going to be uh, almost difficult to operate at first because we wanted every small little contact to safe the robot and we wanted to assess what happened. And, yeah. and what you're referring to, I think, is uh, one of the crew members was floating by right. Uh, right before we were getting ready to do the handshake and uh, just brushed up against the robot and the robot wasn't expecting it. Um, it hit it in an area we weren't uh, we weren't ready for for that upcoming task yeah. and the robot said uh, let's shut down yeah. and let's restart and so uh, we were actually very excited to see that because uh, you know the, it operated exactly the way that it was supposed to and we recovered really quickly from that and um, and so it's it's uh, it's operating very normally well and it boots back up pretty fast I mean I don't think my laptop starts back up as fast as what you guys had it turned back on and, and ready to go with a handshake I mean yeah, it's just and, a matter of minutes and well, that's been a very uh, interesting learning experience for us as well because the data connections the network connections um, um, you know, they're not they're not like being down here, you know, operating the robot in the lab. Yeah. And so having to deal with uh, calm dropouts and refresh rates that are really slow, it's been it's been uh, a great learning experience um, that we're going to. It'll definitely pay uh, it'll pay uh, dividends in the future for more complicated operations. So let's talk once again about this task bar. Now we talked about this earlier this mm -hmm. week that there's this sort of um, kind of an experiment kit that the mm -hmm. that the robot's going to be taking, you know, trying to flip some switches and do some other things. When is that going to happen, and what's next? Yeah. So we've essentially 
essentially divided the operations of the robot into two stages. One, we have all these free space motions. Right. And then the second stage of the operation is all contact operations. Um, so we've, uh, we wanted to make sure that uh, the robot behaves. And that, so the commissioning of the robot is going to transition from uh, you know, more or less waving its arms around, if you will, yeah. and, and assessing and retuning the robot as required for the differences between here on the ground and in, in orbit. And then we are going to move on to, all right, let's start touching things. Okay. Um, let's start interacting with objects. Let's start making contact deliberately, making contact with objects. Now, you can say the handshake yesterday was uh, it's kind of a, uh, you know, a contact operation, but, um, you know, that things are very compliant still. You know, you're not yeah. making contact with rigid objects. And where to you flip have a switch. To flip a yeah. switch, where you have the potential to build up really large forces. Yeah. And so, uh, you know, on the docket for us is absolutely to use the busy board that we have. We are we are training the, the robot on the ground, and you're seeing some video right now of that. Um, and it's not just necessarily, hey, let's have the robot perform these, but let's have it perform it intelligently. Did it flip the switch? Did it recognize it flipped the switch when it needed to? Mm -hmm. Is it going to correct back when it didn't uh, flip the switch? Um, the button presses, um, did it did it understand that it it uh, did a successful operation. And so it's combining the intelligence that it takes to actually interact with the, the objects and the crew. And uh, and that's and that's what we are learning here on the ground and we want to upload those capabilities to the one in orbit. And that's that's why we have an identical copy here on the ground um, uh, that that is a complete um, replica of, of both the busy board and the robot because we want to be able to simulate everything on the ground, simulate it in hardware, and then upload those routines to the one in orbit. So are they going to do this in, in the Destiny laboratory where it's stored right now? Yeah, absolutely. Um, we uh, This this first panel here um, that you're looking at is is uh, on, our, on our list of uh, things coming up that we want to do. It involves an integration between our vision system, the tactile feedback and the sensors of the hand, um, and, and the control systems that are controlling this robot all have to be, act, uh, you know, acting and harmoniously and and uh, and successfully. So it's it's a it's a very, um, you know, there's a lot of serial things that all have to be working before the robot does a function. Well, this is all very cool stuff. So yeah. it's a, it's been, it's been a cool week sitting here watching, you know, this this uh, activity take place. Yeah, it's been an amazing week uh, for the for the engineering team and the, and the flight control team and, and the crew and and uh, we actually got a call from uh, from. Dan and uh, right after the op, he called down to our lab and just wanted to say, uh, you know, a few words to us personally. And uh, and he's tremendously excited to be working with this. And I can't say enough about about Dan. Uh, he is he is uh, uh, unbelievable when when operating this robot. He uh, he he just gets it. And uh, it's been he's been an absolute pleasure pleasure to work with. It's got to be fun doing something you know that's literally brand new like this. Yeah, actually, yeah. You know. There's uh, it's it has been very um, just. It's hard to describe. Mm -hmm. It really is because our whole lab has this sense of, you know, of ushering in this this new paradigm, mm -hmm. and uh, we're really excited to be at the front of that.